Hello and welcome to my Power Apps with Excel tutorial. Now in this course you're going to learn how to get Power Apps, connecting to Excel, how to create forms, how to work with galleries, reading Excel data, writing to Excel, Power Apps functions and much more. Power Apps was designed by Microsoft with non-programmers in mind. You can write simple apps without knowing how to program. And it has a drag and drop interface similar to Microsoft Access. Although strictly speaking, Power Apps is not a replacement for Microsoft Access. There are two types of apps that you can create, Canvas and Model Driven. Power Apps run seamlessly on Android or iOS. And of course, Windows. You can create apps that work on tablets, smartphones, and even desktop. Now the examples of data sources that you can use in Power Apps are Dataverse, SharePoint, Excel, and SQL Server. And there are many more, but these are the main ones which tend to get used. Now when you're working with Power Apps and Excel, the Excel data must be in a tabular format. You cannot use calculated columns in the tables. And Power Apps will add a column to identify each row in the table, and you must not delete this column. Power Apps by default only reads and writes the first 500 records of data, but this limit can be increased to 2000 records. So, let's get started. Now before you start this course, you need to have Power Apps. And to do that, you need to go to the Microsoft website at powerapps.microsoft.com. And here you'll be able to set yourself up with a Power Apps plan. You can start free as well. So there's that option for you as well to get Power Apps. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to be creating a very basic Excel spreadsheet and this is going to become our data source for our Power Apps application. So as you can see on screen here, I've got a very basic Excel doc set up. It's just got the first name, last name, email, phone, age and department as headers and there's just a bit of data filled in there as well. Now the way Power Apps works is that it won't read Excel data unless it's in a table format or a tabular format. So if I just connect to this in Power Apps I'm going to get an error or a warning. It's just going to say it cannot find any tables so it cannot show any data in Power Apps. So the way around that is to put all this into a table, which will make it readable to Power Apps. So the way we do that is we just select all the columns that we have. So I'm just going to highlight from the first one to the very last one. So I highlight it and then come to the Home tab and where it says Format as a Table, click on that and select any one of these formats. So I'm just going to select the first one, light, click that. And here it just tells you the cells you've selected and the columns. And it's asking you here if your table has headers. And because mine has, it's ticked. So let's click OK. And it's done. So at the top here you have a table design tab and on the left hand side you can see it's got the table name. So it's called it table 1 as a default but I could change that to something like table names for example. Just to make it a bit clearer for myself within Power Apps. 
So that's done. So I could then just save that locally. So So I'll just call that Excel employees and I'll just save that here under my documents folder. So basically these are all the names now which are going to be within my Power Apps application. But I also want to show a list of departments that they could be working in. So what I can do here is under the sheets tab here I can create a new sheet new worksheet click that and there's a new worksheet created so I could then Okay, so again, this needs to be in a tabular format for Power Apps to read. So if I just select all the cells and come up to Formats Table, again, I select Light, click OK here, and the table name, I could call it Table Departments, for example. So if I just put in Depths or something like that, and then save the whole thing. So what we have now are two Excel data sources. So in this first worksheet, I've got a list of employees. And if I click on anywhere in the cells, it's going to tell me on the table design that that table is called table name. So that's the data source. That's the first data source I've got. If I click on sheet two, we can also see that we have departments here. If you click in there, under table design, we see we have a table name called table departments. So those are our two data sources. So now let's go and create a Power App and wire up this data source to it. So now we're going to create our first Power Apps application. So the way you do that, is you load up the Edge browser, or if you have Chrome or whatever you want to use, um, you can you can use that. But I'm going to be using the Edge browser um, because it's Microsoft Microsoft's own browser, and it tends to work pretty well with um, the Power Platform and Power Apps. So the first thing is you want to actually enter in here make dot Power Apps. dot com make.powerapps.com and that will take you to the Power Apps environment and if you now click on apps and click on new app and we're going to be doing a canvas app today so I'll select canvas I'll give it a name so for this one I'm just going to call it um, Excel employees and we're going to put it as perhaps a phone app click create and Power Apps goes away and starts to load up all the bits that it needs so here we have the Power Apps interface and this is where we can start to sketch out our application and the reason it's actually called a canvas app is because it gives you like a blank canvas as you can see there and what we can do now is we can start to sketch out our app on this blank canvas so it's given us a screen screen one so the first thing we want to do is we want to connect to our Excel data source so on the left hand side here we have this little icon and this is our data icon and it's saying there's no data in your app now 
when you're using Excel, there's two ways of doing it. So if I were to now select add data and it's asking me for a data source. So if I put in Excel, for example, it gives me a couple of options here. One's called import from Excel. The other one is called Excel online business. So import from Excel. This is where you can import all the data in your Excel spreadsheet right into Power Apps. The difference here is that whatever you whatever changes you make in Power Apps, for example, if you add a record or amend a record, that will not reflect back onto your spreadsheet, onto the original spreadsheet that you imported the data from. So as soon as you import the data into Power Apps, the connection with the spreadsheet is lost permanently. Um, the other way of doing it is using Excel Online Business. So this is where you put the Excel spreadsheet into your OneDrive for business. And by doing this, this maintains the connection between whatever you're adding within Power Apps and the Excel spreadsheet. So as soon as you change, for example, a surname in Power Apps, that will reflect back onto the Excel spreadsheet. And if you're adding records or removing records, they will all be reflected as well on the Excel spreadsheet. But before, you, before I can do that, I'm going to need to move my Excel file, which is on my local drive. I'm going to have to move it into my OneDrive for Business. So let's do that now. So here is my OneDrive for Business. And I'm going to select the Power Apps folder. And I'm going to drop the Excel file in here. So in my local drive, here's the Excel spreadsheet I created earlier. So what I want to do is I want to move this local file to OneDrive for Business. So I just drag it and drop it into OneDrive for Business. And there it is. Now if we go back to Power Apps and select a data source again. So here we have Excel Online Business. If I select that, and then you select OneDrive for Business, And these are the folders in my OneDrive for Business. So I select Power Apps, and there's my spreadsheet Excel employees. So if I select that, it then asks me to choose a table. And these are the tables I created earlier table departments and table names. And we can see these once again here table names and table departments. So back into Power Apps. So I, I'm going to select them both and click Connect. And here it asks me if I want to insert like a primary key into the Excel table or use a unique column from the Excel table. So I think I will select the first one, Insert Auto-Generated ID. Click connect and it's done it here on the left hand side you can see under the data sources it's brought in my Excel table names departments and the one called table names so now we have our data sources in Power Apps we can now start to sketch out our application and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create screens, which then connects to this data source. And to get the other parts of this video series, if you look below in the description, you'll find a link to all the different videos in this Excel Power Apps tutorial series. If you like this video, please click the button to like it, or why not subscribe to my channel? Or you can even download my free Power Apps for Newbies book at www.
powerappsfornewbies.com.